one of the more popular questions on this channel is uh, what would happen to Jupiter and Saturn and possibly other gas giants if they were placed um, as close to the Sun as currently Earth is? In other words, if they were only one astronomical unit or 150 million kilometers away from the Sun. Well, honestly, I don't know, but we're about to find out. And if you still haven't subscribed, click that subscribe button because there's going to be a lot of more science videos coming in the future. Welcome to What The Math. So, since there's no actual simulation that has anything like this, we might have to do this manually by basically slowing down uh, the simulation here and essentially just placing um, Saturn, Jupiter, Uranus and Neptune in this orbit. They will have to share orbit with Earth and we'll see how all of this goes. There might be some collisions, but you know what? It's a risk I'm willing to take. So, let's uh, start with Jupiter. I'm going to place Jupiter with all of its moons right here. And as you can see, Jupiter has a lot of moons. And some of them are actually going to very likely cause a lot of havoc and collisions with other objects, including Venus, because some of them might even cross into Venus's orbit. We also are going to place Saturn right here in front of Earth a little bit. Uh, and uh, let's also place Uranus and, of course, Neptune. All right, so all four of them are sort of in the same... Um, more or less the same orbit as Earth. Obviously, Uranus and Neptune don't really have as many moons as um, Jupiter and Saturn. But uh, I think I'm going to kind of focus my view here on Jupiter just to see what essentially happens, you know, after a few months, after a few years. And, uh, oh boy, I already see some collisions going on. Uh, what just happened? I definitely saw a collision right here. Did something collide with Saturn? Yes, something did. And I think it may, may have been one of its moons, actually. Uh, possibly one of the bigger moons that was in this vicinity. So I think it's actually because um, they don't really have stable orbits anymore. And they kind of decided to fall into Saturn. So let me just place them um, around Saturn manually, just for fun. Just so at least we have them and we can see their temperature and we can see their parameters sometime in the future. I wonder if the same happened to Jupiter, actually. Let's go to Jupiter and find out if the four... Um, Jovian moons are still here, and it looks like they're not. It looks like they also have been swallowed by Jupiter as well, or possibly flew away somewhere. So I'm going to replace them. Uh, here comes Io, Ganymede, uh, Callisto, and Europa. Where is Europa? Here it is. Because I kind of want them to be around here. And as you can see, they're not really staying in a stable orbit. Oh, actually, maybe they are. Maybe they are. Never mind. Uh, false alarm, everyone. The orbit is stable now. Uh, Alright, so this is what the new system looks like. You have a lot of moons uh, around Jupiter, a very, very large radius here. Uh, some of them might end up on Venus because they might actually have a collision. Uh, there is Neptune right here with a smaller moon called Samanthi, uh, which is totally mispronounced because I have no idea how to pronounce that. Um, it's actually the first time I myself have heard of it. I know it's a really interesting object, but um, looks like... We might have to talk about this in one of the future videos because it is very, very far away from Neptune. Um, and uh, here, of course, uh, is Neptune and I do not see Triton. So um, Triton is, of course, one of the more important uh, satellites of Neptune and it may have been either swallowed as well or possibly disappeared somewhere. So let's place it here manually. And it looks like Uranus is doing just fine. Most of its moons are still there. Uh, the big ones are, I think, are missing as well, but uh, the biggest moons on Uranus are not as impressive as some of the other moons. So we're just going to leave Uranus as it is. We're not going to really talk about it as much as some of the other uh, moons, like, for example, Titan. This is actually the one I'm really, really excited about. So let's maybe accelerate this a little bit, wait a few days, a few weeks, a few months, and uh, or at least a year. And then look at the temperature here. Oh my god, look at that. It's actually three degrees, uh, four degrees Celsius on, on Titan. That is very, very interesting. That is a very comfortable planet now. The current temperature of Titan is like minus 190 degrees Celsius. But it looks like if we were to place Saturn in the orbit of Earth, Titan would become a very, very comfortable world. Of course, it totally makes sense too, because Titan is relatively large. It has atmosphere of about 1.2 atmospheres. In other words, it does have a very thick atmosphere, even thicker than that on Earth. And um, it does uh, have a bit of a um, greenhouse effect, but unfortunately, its greenhouse effect 
actually does the opposite. It cools the planet or oh, the moon down. It actually makes it a little bit cooler. So uh, this is why it's cooler here than it is on um, on Earth, because the average temperature on Earth is about 15 degrees Celsius. Now, because many of these moons actually escaped their uh, previous orbits, I guess the planets weren't really holding on holding on to them very very um, strongly. You can see that all of them are basically just kind of orbiting around the sun, not around the planets. And um, I'm guessing some of them will possibly land on Earth and cause the collision. Or just kind of stay in their own orbit around the sun. So this is going to be very interesting to see. This is actually what it looks like if I remove everything but labels. So there's a lot of different objects. There's actually up to 200 objects here in uh, basically in the same orbit as Earth. All right, so um, let's wait until 2016 and then take a look at them again. And so here we go, 2016, a year later. Let's go through each of these moons and uh, the planets as well and take a look at their atmospheric uh, parameter. So Titan got a little bit colder. It's closer to zero degrees now. Uh, but this also means that there might be some liquid water here because Titan does have water. And so it might actually look something like this. It might be the new face of Titan. A bit of clouds, a bit of um, vapor in there, and of course, uh, lots of lots of water. Um, still not... Oh, is that Jupiter? Wait, what are you doing here? That is very interesting. Jupiter is in a completely wrong position. It sh this should <laughs> technically be in the moon of Saturn. It looks like they all mixed up uh, and possibly started influencing each other's orbits. Which is not a good sign. This is not a very stable system. Anyway, so yeah, Titan uh, may have some islands, but for the most part, it's probably going to be a liquid world. And we're passing by Jupiter very, very close, uncomfortably close. And whoa, okay, that was almost a collision. That was very interesting. Anywho, uh, the temperature on Jupiter is minus 23 degrees Celsius. It is cold. It is not very warm. So um, if we actually do live here, it, it would possibly be in the upper layers um, in the so-called uh, so um, cloud worlds, just like in Star Wars. But other than that, it's pretty cold. We're not going to go there. Io, however, is also cold. <laughs> Never mind. Forget about Io. Minus 40 degrees. Uh, looks like Titan has now been captured by, uh, by Jupiter. It's going to be the uh, new moon of Jupiter. And it looks like Ganymede actually swallowed something. Don't really know what, but it did, um, it did receive a collision from something else. Uh, the actual temperature of Ganymede is going to be below zero, possibly closer to... Uh, is it closer to minus 50 or minus 40? It's going to be closer to minus 40 degrees Celsius. So Ganymede is also not a very comfortable world to live on. Uh, we can also forget about Ganymede and it looks like it actually is Europe that I'm missing. Yeah, I think Ganymede actually had a collision with Europe uh, that we unfortunately didn't get to observe, but I'm sure it was fun. And when I say Europe, I mean Europa, of course. And here it is. All right, Europa, uh, minus 57 degrees Celsius. So this is still going to be a nice world, maybe a little bit warmer than it currently is, but not warm enough for us to, to care about. Moving on to Saturn, which lost its favorite satellite Titan. Wait a second, there's two Titans? Oh, that's because the other Titan escaped and I added a new one. That totally makes sense. This Titan is more comfortable. It's a little bit warmer, actually, three degrees Celsius. I don't really know why. Maybe it's because of the seasons. It's possibly because of the seasons. Uh, but so yeah, the temperature here is a little bit like maybe two or three degrees warmer than the other Titan, uh, but it still is a little bit chilly. Uh, Rhea has minus 140 degrees Celsius. Very, very cold. Dione, minus 30. Very, very cold. Uh, Saturn itself, minus 25. Also very cold. So yes, none of these are unfortunately hospitable. They're a little bit too chilly for us to survive on. Uh, let's go to Neptune. Neptune is minus 16 degrees Celsius. It's a little bit warmer than other gas giants right now. And its uh, moon Triton is very hot. Why is it so hot? I do not know. It is 164 degrees Celsius. I am wondering if it's because of the collision or if it actually is naturally that hot. And if so, why so? Uh, let's find out. Let's just lower this to like 10 and see what happens. Is it going up? Yeah, it's definitely going up. So interestingly, the temperature here for some unknown reason is um, extremely, extremely hot. I don't really know why the game calculates the temperature of Triton as so warm, but my guess it's because, yes, it's because of, for some reason, 
In this game, Triton has an um, atmospheric pressure of 1.72 atmospheres, uh, or basically 72% higher than atmosphere on Earth. That is actually not real, it's kind of unrealistic, it is closer to like 0 0.001, which is very, very low. Uh, which means that, of course, this will now decrease temperature dramatically, it will drop to about minus 30 degrees Celsius. That sounds a lot more realistic than, than it was before. Alright, so Triton, good. Uh, lastly, let's take a look at um, Uranus. And Uranus itself is also relatively high, minus 19 degrees Celsius, but uh, the three moons that we kind of care about, because these are the only moons that are large enough, are Ariel, Miranda, and Titania. Ariel is hot. Why is Ariel so hot? Once again, because of the atmosphere. <laughs> For some unknown reason, uh, the atmosphere of Ariel is too, too high. It's actually even lower than that, it's possibly like 0.1 of that. All right, so now it's going to get lower, possibly to the same temperature as we saw before at around minus 30 degrees Celsius. Miranda is at minus 19, and Titania um, seems to have been smoking a second ago. I think it just lost all of its water. Uh, so yes, Titania has a temperature of minus 14 degrees Celsius and possibly dropping. So it's going to get to about minus 30. But I think all of its atmosphere has just been burned by... All of its remaining atmosphere, that is, has just been burned by the sun because it is currently very, very far away from the sun. So uh, the solar radiation doesn't affect it as much. Uh, but because uh, there is very, very little magnetic protection here, magnetic field protection, uh, if we place a lot of these objects closer to the sun, a lot of them will basically lose all of, it, all of their atmosphere because the sun will just burn it away. Uh, the only exceptions to that, of course, are the objects orbiting Saturn and Jupiter, because both Saturn and Jupiter have very, very, very high magnetic field. I kind of wonder if I can show it to you by actually enabling the magnetosphere for all of these objects. Let's see what they look like if we actually turn them on. Okay, so all of the magnetospheres are on, and you can kind of see, so this is right there, this is Neptune, relatively small. Uh, this is Uranus, also relatively small, so these will obviously not cover the uh, moons I've, ju I've just talked about. This is Saturn, a lot larger. It does cover the, uh, the main Saturn moons, uh, so the biggest ones, including, I believe, Titan, although possibly not Titan, maybe only some of the closer ones. But Jupiter, look at the size of that thing. This is how big the magnetosphere of Jupiter is. It is humongous. Um, and it basically covers everything. It even goes as far as uh, almost reaching the orbit of Saturn in real life, actually. Um, whereas, if you look at Earth, this it, you actually you actually can't even see it. It's so small in comparison to Jupiter. There is very very tiny magnetosphere of Earth. And so anyway. Well, that's really all I wanted to talk about in this video. I wanted to kind of show you what happens if you place uh, gas giants with their moons around um, the same orbit as Earth. It looks like we didn't really receive any more collisions on Venus, although let me just check if Ven how Venus is doing. And there is Venus right there. Nope, Venus is still just as it was before. Super, super hot, but uh, did not experience any collisions. Um, and essentially, this is what would happen. So obviously, things would go a little bit chaotic, things would fly away start orbiting around the other objects, and a lot of these um, planets will eventually kind of disrupt each other into completely new orbits. This is where we'll probably start experiencing something called planetary migration again. Um, and very likely the only survivor of all of this, and look at that, see, something's already flying away. The only survivor of all of this is going to be Jupiter, and possibly Saturn, because they are the most massive ones. Everything else, on the other hand, is going to fly far, far away and most likely uh, disappear, or at least start orbiting somewhere else in a completely different uh, region of solar system. And anyway, so hopefully now you're satisfied with the answer, because a lot of you have been asking me, so what would happen to the moons? What would happen to the actual uh, gas giants? And this is what would happen. Basically, their temperature would change, some of the things would get a little bit more chaotic, but everything else would remain the same. And hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to share this video, and like this if you actually enjoyed watching it. I'll see you guys in the next video, where we'll talk about something else, space, math, or science related, and you'll hopefully learn something else as well. I'll see you in the next video, bye bye.